Welcome to Unremembered Hollywood, but that's another story. I'm Abby Larson. Remember when I said... Fritz Schaefer, using the name Edmund T. Pancakes, even managed to get a job as a production assistant on It Happened One Night. He was fired when he thought Claudette Colbert was waving at him, and he accidentally did the Nazi salute back. He was also executed. But that's another story. Well... Here you go. On February 12, 1938, Sturmbrenn Führer Fritz Schaefer stepped off the SS New Amsterdam onto the docks at Manhattan Terminal. According to his documents, he was Carl Jaeger, the bass player for Moritz Tag und Die Zeit a band that was ostensibly in the U.S. to play the German ambassador's son's birthday party. As soon as they cleared customs, Fritz Schaefer stepped into the washroom and a few moments later stepped out as Edmund T. Pancakes. He immediately headed for the train station and bought a ticket to Los Angeles. He wrote of his impressions of America from his train window. If I'm being honest, I expected a little more from the U.S. New York was pretty nice, I guess, at least the dock and the train station. The Midwest was pretty Jonsburg. I guess there's a reason they call it railover country. The Grand Canyon is okay, although we have holes in Germany that are not infested with pack mules. Based on this ho-hum trip, I expect that Hollywood will be wie ein Bayerscher Wimbeutel von einem Zigeuner. <laughs> not sure I want to know what that means. After being in Los Angeles for only a few weeks, he met an assistant director named Hogan Kirsch, at the frolic room, and decided to butter him up. So, you work in the pictures? Yeah, I just wrapped You Can't Take It With You for Capra. You looking to get in the business? That's my plan. Listen, Capra's starting a new movie next week. You don't mind doing grunt work, maybe you could be a production assistant. Doesn't pay much, but you'll meet some people. I could meet Frank Capra? Crew doesn't talk to the actors or higher-ups, but you'll learn all that stuff. Monday morning, 7 a.m. at Columbia. You will not regret this. I am very punctual, organized, and strict. Okay, uh, well, great. Those are all good qualities, I guess. If Kirsch appreciated those characteristics, Pancakes thought, he might be ready to hear more about the Nazis. If you like those traits, then maybe we should have dinner sometime and discuss them further. Oh, well, I don't, uh, um... No, I wasn't saying... Yeah, no, of, of course not. No, I'm not... Neither am I. You're not going to report any of this. What's to report? Because my papers are very much in order. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I do not doubt it. So we're... See you Monday. Things were heating up for pancakes. That was awful, and I apologize. Anyway, he went to set the next Monday morning on the Columbia lot where he ran into Hogan Kirsch. Edmund, welcome. Big day, lot to get through. Just do what I tell you when I tell you and you'll be fine. Only a few rules. One, don't interact with the talent, ever, under any circumstances. I don't care if Walter Connolly punches you in the stomach. Don't talk to the actors. Also, Walter Connolly is most likely going to punch you. It's just his process. I am familiar with similar people. Won't be a... Morning, Hogan. Walter, this picture going to be any good? Beats me. Who's the new guy? Oh, Walter, this is Edmund T. Pancakes. Sorry about the sock in the gut. Just gets my acting juices in a lather. Edmund nodded, remembering Hogan's instructions. You're all right, Ed. I'm going to go find one more person to sock and I'll be ready. Hey, you. Come here a second. You did good. Keep it up and there's a future for you in this business. All right, everyone. First shot is in five minutes. Let's look lively. Edmund went about his work, fetching this and that for whoever asked. By his third day, he knew every single member of the crew and was quite chummy with them. I have identified a few bit players and crew who may be malleable to our new and totally awesome Nazi ideas. I am very good at spying, Journal. Maybe the best. They're going to put a statue of me somewhere. Maybe two statues. And probably give me a medal. A week into filming, he was ready to put his plan into action. The crew was moving to Franklin Canyon, just north of Beverly Hills, to film what would become the famous hitchhiking scene with Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. Edmund was ready. 
At lunch, he would eat near the crew members that he'd identified and casually bring up a meeting he was attending for people with some novel political ideas. Pancakes was ready to... Do, do I have to say this? Pancakes knew they were ready to flip. Just an FYI, I did not write this, guys. The morning's filming went smoothly, and Edmund was rehearsing what he would say to the crew to himself when Hogan called out, That's a cut, everyone. We're going to take five and shoot the reverse, and we'll be at lunch. Edmund was standing by the camera when he noticed something out of the corner of his eye. He turned to see Claudette Colbert, the star of the film, waving at him. Without thinking, he raised his arm in the Nazi salute, then quickly covered by waving back and saying, What? Uh... Oh, hello, Miss Colbert. You are doing such a tremendous job in this film. He looked surprised when Miss Colbert's expression soured. Edmund turned around and saw Claudette's husband, Joel Pressman, behind him. Claudette whispered to someone standing near her, and people on the crew shook their heads at Edmund and whispered. And Hogan looked furious. Before he knew it, a pair of burly studio security guards grabbed him by the shoulders and yanked him away. As he passed by Hogan... Hogan! Hogan, I thought she was waving to me! I didn't mean to break the... Sorry, Edmund. Rules are rules. Yes, but it won't happen again. You did say you were strict. Hogan nodded to the security guards and they dragged him away. Wait, please, please! I just need to finish the day here! As pancakes disappeared from view, Hogan told his assistant director... Damn it, he was serviceable. The guards dragged him to a rough patch of land a good distance away from the film shoot and the main road. Fellas, please, I can walk myself. Look, I learned my lesson. Guys, come on. The guards continued wordlessly until they came to a small clearing where they released Edmund. He didn't turn to face the guards when they let him go. Hmm, You two seem like you're open to new ideas, new ways of doing things. And with your passion for roughing people up, You'd be perfect. He turned around to see them both pointing revolvers at him. Nazis. No need for name calling, Mac. We're just doing our job. I appreciate the extra humiliation, fellas. Well done. Lesson learned. Awful sorry about this, but you were told not to talk to the talent. Wait, wait, wait a second. By the powers vested in us by Harry Cohen and the Columbia Picture Corporation, I sentence you to death. (laughs) Okay. Good one, Hogan. Okay, fellas, you got me. Any last words? I don't want to say this. I'm not saying this. It's embarrassing. (sighs) Pancakes realized he was in a sticky situation. I very much appreciate your adherence to the rules, gentlemen. Back on set, the next scene was up. Okay, everyone, quiet, please. This is scene 16, Baker, take one, and... Holding for gunfire. Holding for gunfire. And... We're holding for gunfire. Unremembered Hollywood was created, written, and produced by Charlie Fonville. Abby Larson was played by Annie Savage. That's me. Original music by Jonathan Dinerstein. With Mike Furman as Edmund T. Pancakes. Mark Evan Jackson as Hogan Kirsch. Mike Rock as Walter Connolly. Justin Wright Newfeld as guard number one. And Jonathan Dinerstein as guard number two. Join us next month for another unremembered tale from Hollywood's yesteryear. You can subscribe and find more episodes and info on our website, unrememberedhollywood.com. We're also on Instagram and Twitter, if such things interest you, at unrememberedpod. If you like the show, why not leave a review on iTunes? Those two goons would. And in case you hadn't noticed, Unremembered Hollywood is a work of fiction. Some of the names are the names of real people, but they never said these words in this order. Characters, dialogue, and actions were all completely made up. No production assistants were harmed during the making of It Happened One Night, which is a really good movie. And again, I deeply apologize for the puns that I was forced to say. <laughs>